God praise on today. I want to welcome you to Miracle City Church. I get the privilege to be the lead pastor here. My name is David B. Franklin, and I'm excited that you have chosen to worship with us today because here's the thing you need to know about this place. We still believe in miracles. I wish I had a witness in the building. We still believe that God does miracles. We still believe that God performs mighty works in this earth today. And who knows, you might just be the person who a miracle has been assigned to today. I don't know, maybe it's you. Maybe, maybe it's only the shouters that get the miracle. Maybe, maybe it's only the praisers that get the miracle. I don't know, but I, I, I know this, I know this, that God is not short or slow concerning, concerning his promises. His arm is not short. His ways are not slow. What he's really doing, as I told you last week, is he's waiting on us to catch up. Come on and say amen. So will you declare in 2020, you're going to catch up to God? Come on, amen. God's not going to have to chase you down no more. You're going to let God catch you. Come on, somebody. This is going to be the year that things change and that his promises fully manifest in your life. Well, listen, I want to remind you what we believe here because I believe it's so important that you understand what part of a ministry that you are sitting in right now. And so I want to share with you our mission statement. And I want everybody this year to commit it to memory. We're going to post it everywhere because I need you to understand that this is what life is really about. Will you repeat it with me? It simply says, we exist so that people will experience the miracle of life in Jesus Christ. And there's four values that we have that we want you to embrace in order to experience that life. The first thing is to experience love. We know that without love, we wouldn't be here. Come on and say amen. How many of you know that you're living on the unconditional love and grace of God? Oh, I thought I had a better amen than that. Amen. So that's the first thing we pray. Every time you come to these doors, you experience love. But then after that, we want you to commit to learn. And you can do that by joining one of our grow groups. You'll hear more about that in the coming weeks. But we have found that you can't understand how to overcome your past and step into your tomorrows if you aren't surrounded by a group of people to help hold you accountable, to pray with you, to journey with you through life. And we want to support you in doing that. The third thing is we want you to rise to lead. After you have experienced love and you commit to learn, then it's time to help somebody out. Say, I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to help somebody. And the way we want you to do that is by getting connected in Growth Track. Growth Track is a four-week experience that happens every weekend after our worship experience. And you can connect today. Today is Growth Track Step 2. And, and listen, I, I say it. I know it's not good English, but I say it anyway. This is the funnest one. Amen. It's funnest. Amen. That's right. It is uh, because we're going to actually give you a spiritual gifts inventory and a personality test. So you're going to get to understand how God has wired you because we figure if you can understand how God has wired you, you will understand how to arrive at your destiny. Do I have an amen in the building? And the last thing we want from you is to choose to live. And we believe this happens when you choose to serve others. The highest level of living is when you're using your gifts, your talents, and your insight to serve somebody else. What do you say? And so we're believing that if you get connected on a ministry team here, that can be a beginning way for you to learn how to really serve so that God's kingdom can be built. So we're inviting you in to this, this, this miraculous experience that we call Miracle City all year long. If this is the first time you're joining with us today, then I need you to understand that we play for keeps. Come on and shout, Miracle City. I said shout. Amen. We play for keeps. So we want you to be connected to this fellowship, and we invite you to journey with us all year long. Get your year right today, and then hang out for the rest of the journey. If you would allow me to invite you to rise to your feet one more time for the reading of the scripture of the word of God on today. We're going to Exodus chapter 14, and we started a series last week called I Will See It. I will see it. I wonder if there's anything you've been waiting, waiting for it to be manifested in your life. Is there anybody in the building, you've had a dream, you've had a promise, you've had an idea, 
And it's like, when is this thing going to come to pass? We want to determine at the beginning of this year that this is the year that I will see it. I'm going to see that promise manifested. I'm going to see that dream realized. I'm going to see that hope delivered. Come on and say amen in the building. This is not the year for your hope to be deferred. This is the year for the dream to be manifested. Come on, somebody. Come on. Exodus chapter 14. If you're there, say, I'm with you, Pastor. If you're not, then I just need you to look on the screen. <laughs> I'm reading from the New Living Translation. You ready for this? I don't know if you're ready. Will you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you sure you're ready? You don't look ready. Now they're all offended. Tell them I was just playing. Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Here's what the word of the Lord says. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch. You missed your shout already. Watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will not. You will never see again. Here's the reason why. For the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Now, now, now we're still under the series, I will see it. But will you, will you turn to your neighbor? And make a declaration that will not fully manifest till the end of the year. Will you look at your neighbor and say these words? Neighbor, I beat my battles. I need somebody to tell the other neighbor on the other side. Say, neighbor, I beat my battles. Now give God a good praise as we get ready for the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's going to be your testimony at the end of the year. I beat my battles. <laughs> uh, they tried to destroy me, but I won. Come on and say amen. They tried to conquer me, but I serve a conquering king. Come on and say amen. They tried to overcome me, but I serve a Bible, a God who told me in the word of God that I am more than a conqueror. Come on and say amen. And I told y'all many, many, many months ago, and I got to tell you again, because this thing is so present and so powerful in my mind right here, is that, is that being more than a conqueror means that you don't just conquer something, but that you possess it. You missed it. You missed it. In other words, sometimes there's battles that you have to fight. But after you have finished fighting the battle, there is a promise you must possess. See, being more than a conqueror doesn't just mean you get over your struggles. It means you possess the promises that God has declared over your life. And I need you to get that in your spirit this year, that this is the year everything is coming into focus. I will see it because I'm going to beat my battles. Come on and give God praise one more time. Now, given that today is relaunch day, and for those of you who do not know what that means, other churches have vision days or vision nights. Um, we call ours relaunch day because we believe that after God has carried us through one year of conquering territory, it's time to relaunch into new territory. Do I have any witnesses in the building? Amen. We are never called to be a people who are stagnant or who stay in one place. We must always be moving according to the direction and the will of God. So inasmuch as we believe God calls us to something, we know once God calls us to something, he always calls us to something more. And I wonder 
if you can get that in your heart today, even as we begin this word, that you understand that you serve a progressive God. You serve a God who is about movement. You serve a God who is about change. He not only wants to heal what you've been through, but he wants to deliver you into what he has promised for you. And so you serve a God who does not get, get comfortable in one place. He is always seeking how he can develop and grow his people so that they can be prepared to conquer the next territory. It is a good thing to heal from brokenness in your life, but you can get complacent even in your healing. You missed it already. You can get comfortable in a place that will cause you to actually reverse the healing process that you went through. You missed it already. Here it is. Here it is. What can happen is, is you can spend so much effort trying to overcome something that you don't realize that God is always calling you to growth. And if you hang out in a place too long, if you, if you settle in a territory too long, what will happen is the settling and the complacency will undo the progress that you made when you were overcoming the brokenness that you just came out of. And so I want you to get in the habit of learning how to follow God through continuous seasons of change. I want you to get comfortable with a God that wants to push you beyond the limits of what you thought to be possible. I want you to be comfortable with a God who is glad that you've come out of hell in high water, but he is also a God that has new mountains for you to climb. I want you to get comfortable with a God who is saying, I'm so glad that you trusted me to heal you from your trauma in childhood, but now I want to develop you so that you can help other people heal from their trauma. I want you to get comfortable with a God who is always about progress. And I need to speak a word to a few of you who are not waiting for a dream to be manifested, but has already had a dream manifested. Uh, 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 for, for, for some of us, you're, 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 you're saying, you know what, I, 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 I'm, I'm waiting on God to do something in 2020. For others of you, 2019 wasn't so bad. There were some things that turned around in 2019. There were some things that got rectified and ordered and set in, 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 in motion in 2019. But, but I need you to understand that even though God has taken you out of stuff and he has manifested what you did not even believe possible, I want you to understand that the last dream that you have is not the last dream that God has for you. You missed your shout already. But I need you to get it that, that, that even though you might have come a long way, there is still more. Say, there's still more. Still more. And so I don't want you to get complacent in where you are and then lose the power of what you've learned along the journey. Because this is what happened to the Israelites. Can I get in the text real quick? Amen. This is what happened to the Israelites. The Israelites got complacent with the fact that God had led them out of Egyptian bondage. And then they got in the wilderness and lost the power of their deliverance. You missed it. You missed it. Amen. They got, they, they, got, they, got, they got excited initially to see God's hand move. But then while they were in the wilderness, they got, they got complacent because, because the wilderness did not have all of the promises that they believed were due to them according to the word of the Lord. And so they got comfortable. They got comfortable. Will you just push your neighbor who thinks that it's time to fall asleep? Will you push your neighbor? And tell them, don't get too comfortable. That's right. I said push them. That's right. That's all right. Amen. We got security. If somebody gets a little out of their way, we can, we can take care of that. Push them and tell them, say, don't get too comfortable. 
Listen, listen, I'm going to keep moving and I'm going to give you the vision for the year, but I need you to get this. This is for old and young. See, don't think because you're 70 or because you're 80 that God is comfortable with where you have gotten. I want you to understand that as long as you have breath in your lungs, there is still a calling on your life. There is still work for God to do. And you cannot afford to get complacent in a place that will cause you to lose the power of what you learned when God was delivering you. Keep moving. Declare this is the year I will see it. So here we find the children of Israel are getting prepared for the promised land. They haven't even gotten to the wilderness yet. They're getting prepared for the promised land. And, and, and I just need somebody in the building to just thank God with me for a God who will prepare you for the promised land while you're still in bondage. A God who sees you while you're still in captivity. A God who sees you when you're still broken. A God who sees you when you still don't have answers. A God who sees you when you still don't even have confidence in yourself. A God who sees you while you're depressed. A God who sees you while you're walking through hell. A God who sees you even when family can't. He sees them sees the children of Israel there in Egyptian bondage and, and, and he prepares to deliver them and I believe he says the most significant thing that I want you to hear today and what I want you to understand about your 2020 and what I am excited for as a church for us to see happen this year. He says the most significant thing in, in, in Exodus chapter 14 verse 13 and 14. He says, he says, I need you to watch. In other words, in other words, I need you to open your eyes because what I'm about to do is going to destroy the battle that you have been dealing with and it's going to destroy it so sufficiently that you will never see it again. I want you to get it. I want you to get it. That, that I, am, I am believing by faith that those who can walk this journey, those who commit themselves to this journey, I want to believe by faith with you, for me and for you, that there are some battles that you will no longer have to fight once this year is over. You will never see this trouble again. You will never see this heartache again. You will never see this pain again. You will never see this, pro this, this problem again. You're never going to deal with this battle again. This is the year that some battles are going to be buried in the grave. You'll be able to say at the end of the year, I beat my battles. <laughs> But the truth is, the truth is, you will have to declare like the text that it wasn't really me who did it. it. Wasn't really me who did it, but it was actually God who fought the battle on my behalf. And when, mm, when God fights a battle, when God gets in the room, when God gets in the ring, when God decides he's going to throw his weight around on my behalf, you cannot predict how powerful and how complete the deliverance he will provide will be. All you can do is stand back and watch and see the salvation of the Lord. Good. God will fight the battle. So then what do I have to do? That's a good question. That's a good question. Pastor, that's a good question. Pastor, I think that's a good question. What do I have to do? Thank you. A few of y'all caught on. What do I have to do? The rest of y'all still slow. I want you to say that's a good question.
what do I have to do? That was still only 40% of y'all. What's wrong with you? What do I have to do? Thank you. What do I have to do? Yeah, okay, you didn't have to do it that time. All right, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Watch this. I want you to understand. I'm going to tell you something, and then I'm going to answer the question. I want you to understand what God is saying to them is simply this. The perspective that the Israelites had, here's what God is saying. God is saying their perspective will now be shaped by what God does and not by what Egyptians do. Okay, all right, all right, okay, okay. What do I have to do? I gotta change my perspective. Exactly how do I need to do that? Okay, watch it, watch it. Understand, God says, you will never see the Egyptians again. You will never see the Egyptians again. Right? You will never see that authority figure in your life again. You will never have to serve that master again. You will never have to deal with that demon again. You will never see that obstacle again. You will never deal with that battle again. So watch this. You don't have to complain about it anymore. You don't have to fuss with it anymore because, because since it is non-existent, you don't have to battle back and forth with that particular issue because God is saying what you are going to see is not the bondage of that issue, but instead you are going to see the grace of my glory. Watch this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, 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 so if what I'm seeing is only what God is doing, then my perspective can't be shaped by the bondage that I was in. My perspective can only be shaped by the power that I see God displaying on my life. Wouldn't it be something interesting if even in your obstacles, you didn't see the problem, you actually saw the God working in the midst of the problem? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Even if when things showed up in your life that you did not plan for, you didn't actually see the issue that was presenting itself. You actually saw how God was going to use that issue to strengthen something inside of you. Wouldn't it be powerful if every time somebody brought some gossip to your doorstep, you didn't listen to the gossip, but instead you saw an opportunity to help your brother or sister learn how to trust and rely on Jesus? What if when you saw that next bill show up, you didn't see a bill that you couldn't pay. You saw an opportunity for God to use that bill to reveal his glory and put resources in your account. What if the trouble that you're going through as you try to figure out what you're going to do with your job and what you're going to do with your career and what your purpose is really all about. What if the challenges that you're dealing with while you're trying to understand even your very own identity, you didn't see as a challenge. Challenge, but you saw it as an opportunity for God to pour his ideas in your mind, in your spirit, so that you could become what he desires you to become. What if for the rest of 2020, you didn't see the hand of the devil, you just saw the hand of God? God says, God says, not that the Egyptians won't exist but you won't see it. I'm trying to do the best I can. You won't see it. You won't see it. Yes, there is a physical separation, but I think the physical separation is less important than the spiritual one. God says you won't see it. Not that it's not there. You just won't see it. See, here is what I'm believing for 2020, for all of us, that every, that's right, you hear me clearly, every area of your life will be healed by the hand of God. 
And we're going to put some teeth on that because last week I told you that patience is going to turn into prosperity, that despair is going to turn into delight, and that your possibilities are going to turn into permanence. I want to put some teeth on that because I want you to be able to connect with this community and actually have the ability and actually have the opportunity and even some resources to actually help what we're saying in theory to be made manifest in practice. Is that all right? See, because see, 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 because I know how this is. You feel you'll feel good after today's message. You say, "Ooh, pastor preach." You better say, "Pastor preach." Better say, "Pastor preach." Preached, man, and man of God preached. Okay, okay. Here it is. I want you. I don't want you to just be able to say, "Pastor preach," but I actually want you to then have some opportunities to follow up in a practical way on what we have discussed in theory. Because I understand one of the reasons why we have not beaten our battles yet is because we don't have the tools to win. I want you to get it. I want you to get it. This is vision, 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 vision day, and I want you to get it, how we're going to put some things in place so that you can actually declare at the end of the year, I beat my battles. But it wasn't because I had the strength it's because I changed my perspective. And I saw God instead of the devil that was trying to attack me. So here it is. I want you to understand that I am believing and we are going to push this year that every area of your life will be healed and strengthened by the hand of God. How are you going to do it, Pastor? That's a good question. Say that's a good question. All right, amen. That was pretty good. I'll take it. All right, here it is. There are several areas of your life that I think, of our lives, that I think need to be addressed. Anybody got issues with your finances? Amen, amen. Only, only the honest people said amen. Don't nobody say amen to this. Anybody got an issue with your marriage? All right, hey, that's it. <laughs> right. Anybody want to be married? I thought I'd get a little more amens than that. I say, anybody want to be married? Maybe y'all have seen what married people go through. So you're like, I'm not really sure yet. I don't, I don't know. I'm not quite certain if I want that or not for my life. All right, so maybe there's still a few of y'all that want to be married. Anybody want to have better health? Anybody want to be a better woman? Anybody want to be a better man? Amen, amen. So in, in, in 2020, in 2020, we're actually going to, all the things that I just named, finances, health, men, women, singles, marriage, we're actually going to put together a series of conferences throughout the year to address each one of those issues. Let me hear you say amen. Series of conferences so that we can, with focused attention, attack each one of those areas in our lives. But then that's not going to be it because I know, again, sometimes inspiration has a tendency to fade. Each one of these conferences will be used as, as a platform and as a in order to launch groups around those specific things. What do you mean, Pastor? So when we run our financial conference, we're going to have the conference, and then we're going to launch a series of groups that you can join so that you can follow up on the content that you learn during the conference. Do I have an amen? Because I believe if you can get your finances right, come on, somebody. Come on, if you can get under, from under the burden of debt, if you can really be getting to believe in the promise and, and, and fulfill and see the promise that you shall not be a lender but a, excuse me, you shall not be a borrower but a lender. Anybody tired of the lenders that are in your house? No, you ain't tired of, you ain't, you ain't tired of Sally Mae and Bank of America and, and okay, all right, amen. Amen. 
right? So, so, so every one of the conferences that we're going to launch this year, each one of them that will be focused, high level, high intensity content that's going to allow you to get the kind of information that you need so that you can grow in that specific area of your life. And then from that conference, we will launch groups that will help you to continue to follow up the learnings that you gained at the conference. Come on and say amen. 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 Here's the next thing. Here's the next thing. So that actually covers two pieces, conferences and groups. Now, this next thing is something you've heard me talk about before, because I believe, listen to your pastor clearly. I believe that if you cannot have a, a system to raise up the next generation to be powerful spiritual champions in the kingdom of God, I believe that you will always fail at achieving what God has called you to achieve. And I mean that on an individual and a corporate level. In other words, I believe that no matter what your calling in life is, you got to be pouring into somebody else. Come on, somebody. You have a responsibility to the next generation. It ain't an option. No, I'm... Y all, y all. Okay, okay, let me help you. Let me help you. I'm going to be harsh. Say, it's, it's going to be hard. This is going to be... This is going to hurt. Say, it's going to hurt. God cause the generation to die in the wilderness that would not invest in the next generation. He said, you can't see the promised land if you can't prepare the children to enter the promised land. In fact, your example is corrupting their influence, and so I've got to allow you to go to sleep so that I can deliver the next generation into the promised land. I have said to God, that won't be the story of Miracle City. We ain't going to die so that the next generation can have it. We all going into the promised land together. Amen? Amen? Amen. I want to believe that if we can help you with your marriage, if we can help you with finances, we can help you with your health, we can help you as a man and as a woman, we can do also some things for our youth and for our children that help them to develop the principles so that when they grow up, they won't need a conference. Can we be honest in the building today? You didn't learn everything that you probably should have learned from your parents. Okay, you can't say amen because maybe they watch it online and you don't want to see them shake. They, you don't want to see uh, them. You don't want them to see you shaking your hand. But can we be honest? We grew up with some dysfunction. Come on, somebody. I thought we were in church. Oh, y'all thought church was just to come to look cute? No, church is for you to be real. I wish I had a witness in the building. Church is for you to get healed. Church is for you to be delivered. Not for you to just come and have a nice experience. So I'm going to ask the question again. Did anybody grow up with dysfunction? Well, I am declaring, I told my wife about this, we ain't going to pass along the same dysfunction to our children. Do I got any witnesses? Now, 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 now. There may be some parts of my character that still aren't quite refined enough yet that might find their way trickling down to my kids. But at least it won't be the same dysfunction that I grew up with. Do I have a witness in the building? Okay, okay, they may have some new stuff, but they ain't gonna get the old stuff, amen. And maybe after a few generations, we'll work it all out in Jesus' name. I want you to be healed, but I want our children and our youth to grow up to be spiritual champions. Come on and say amen. That's why this church has committed that the very next hire that we will make, the board voted it through, we voted it through in our mission meeting session, the very next hire that we will make is a youth and children's pastor. Amen. Put your hands together. Amen. That's what we're going to do. Because we realize that, that your investment signals your priorities. I'll tell you what you care about if I can look in your bank account. Amen. I'll tell you what's valuable to you if you give me a se second to look at, 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 at your bank statement. And so we're saying the bank statement of the church got to look good as it relates to youth and children. Amen. Amen. 
All right, so we, we talked about our conferences. We talked about youth and children. Now, we cannot, y'all, we cannot give up our commitment to this community. I need a better amen than that. All we are, are a club. All we are is just a club if we're not actually reaching beyond these walls. Amen? And, and, and we have the ability to reach all over the world through media, but we also got to do some very practical things right in the neighborhood where this church is situated. Can you say amen? And so I need you to get excited with me on one thing, and then I need you to get excited and pray about something else that I'm going to share with you. I want to tell you that this church was approached by members of the community to run in the community in 2020, a community revival under a tent. The community members asked, could you guys lead in this effort? Because we feel like with all that's going on, we, we've been talking to the police, we've been talking to the schools, we've been talking to our city government, but we feel like maybe the missing piece is we need a revival in the community. And we want Miracle City to take the lead on this thing. And for y'all for y'all folks who grew up in the old church, they want to do it under a tent. That ought, to make, that ought to make some traditionalists happy as I don't know what. Come on, somebody. And for, and for the young folks, y'all like, what under a what? We going to be where? Doing what? Why? Come on, somebody. And so we're claiming, we're, we're still working out the dates, but we're claiming for at least a three-day revival right in this community. Can you say Amen. I believe God wants to do something special in this year. And, and this next thing I really need you to pray with me on, I really need you to pray with me on, because I believe if God is giving us that level of, 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 of trust and reputation with our community, then, then I believe that, that he will show favor upon us as well so that we can continue to both build the children that are here and the youth that are here and the adults that are here as well as those who are in our community. Amen. And God showed us a piece of property that's right on Frederick Avenue. And I want you to come to in agreement with me that we can pray and believe God for this piece of property. It'll put us right on Frederick Avenue and I'm praying, this is my prayer, this is my prayer, this is my prayer, that God is going to give us the piece of property and we won't have to sell this one. I thought I need, I, I thought I had some believers in the building. I'm saying not that we are going to replace a property, but God's going to give us an additional property so that we can continue to build the kingdom of God. You need to understand that the property you're sitting on is the result of people's sacrifice, investment, and prayers. And if they had not invested, you wouldn't be here. So can we get excited about the people God is going to bring as a result of the second property that Miracle City is going to own in Jesus' name? Come on, you see it on the screen right there. I'm claiming it already got our logo on it. I'm claiming that we are going to own five, five, five thousand one. 5002 Frederick Avenue in Baltimore, Maryland. Come on and give God a good praise in the building. How many of you can believe God for a community center that has an early childhood development center? It's got after school programming. It's got a, a state of the art auditorium where we can worship and fellowship. That has a gym where you can work out. I wish I had a witness in the building that will get excited about what God wants to do through his people. That's the property right there. We gonna believe it. Tabitha, we doing prayer walks. Come on and say amen. We going after it with all that we have. Because
because I believe God wants to do great things. As beautiful as this building is, you know what it was originally intended to be? A school. Now, I hadn't planned to say that, Lord. Wouldn't it be awesome? Wouldn't it be incredible? If the new site hosted and held our sanctuary, but this site was fashioned back into the purpose that it was originally built for, and we had a thriving Christian school right here in this building to serve the community and the DMV area. I'm just asking, does anybody have faith, or am I the only one? Does anybody believe God for great things, or am I the only one? Does anybody believe this is the year that you're going to beat your battles? You're going to turn the corner. You're not going to fight with what you used to fight. You're coming out of debt. Your marriage is getting healed. You're going to get healthy. Your children are going to grow up to be all that God has called them to be. Is there anybody in the building that can just bless the Lord for what he wants to do through his people? I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But I am excited because I believe that that when we believe God for this spot, we couldn't see it with the natural eyes. I want to wonder if there's anybody from Fulton and Lombard at the old church that can just wave your hand for me right now. And you remember, you couldn't see it. In fact, that church did not theoretically have the capacity to get to where you are today. But you believe God for something spectacular. You believe God for something abnormal. You believe God for something extraordinary. You put your hand to the plow. You put your faith on the line. You made sacrifices until it hurt. And God did something incredible. Well, I wonder if we can catch the spirit of the people who got us here and say we know God hasn't called us just to stay here because God's not a complacent God. God is a progressive God and if he's going to heal all of us, he also wants to heal the community. Is there anybody in the building that can just give God a shout of praise that as he's healing you, he's going to heal the people who are Verse 31, 
See, you got to tie it up, Aaron. You can't just leave it undone. Uh, Vladimir, I had to get to the end. Because in verse 31, it says something powerful. It says, when the people... When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe before him. And then they did this. They put their faith. In the Lord and his servant Moses. I wonder if there's anybody who feels faith rising right now. Will you tell your doubt that your faith is going to win this year? Will you tell your worry that your faith is going to win this year? Will you tell your heartache that faith is going to win this year? You may try. Every hand stretched to heaven. Come on. Every hand stretched to heaven. Woo, God. We thank you, Father. Woo. Every hand stretched to heaven. Woo. Every hand stretched to heaven. Woo! Thank you, God. Every hand stretched to heaven. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just want to give you praise in this moment. We want to give you honor in this moment. We want to declare we're putting our trust in you at this moment. Father, we have already seen you fight our battles. Lord, so what you want to do this year, it ain't nothing new. We've already seen you fight our battles. So Jesus, we want to honor you by giving ourselves to you. We want to honor you by putting our faith in you. And we want to honor you by believing that every battle in our lives will be overcome. Every battle in our lives will be overcome. Lord, new battles may arise in later in life, but this year, every known battle will be defeated in our lives. We're going to get healthy this year. We're going to come out of debt this year. We're going to get married to the right person this year. We're going to heal what's broken in our current marriage this year. We're going to get stronger as a man this year. We're going to get stronger as a woman this year. And we're going to believe you to do great things with our youth and children and the youth and children in the community. So, Father... We submit ourselves to you at the beginning of 2020, and we ask you to have your way. Our hands are stretched as a sign of surrender. We offer our lives and our heart to you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody shouts. Come on. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I pray that you were blessed by this message. We'd love to connect with you beyond this moment. So I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
Um, you'll get updates on when a new sermon is posted, as well as when we go live during our worship experiences uh, on Saturdays at 12 p.m. Uh, also, you can connect with us on social media. You can go to Facebook or Instagram and look for Miracle City Church. And on Twitter, you can find us at Miracle City Life. We really do believe that God's doing something special in this congregation and in this family. And we're so blessed that you've chosen um, to connect with us. And if you've been blessed and you wanna be a blessing, we invite you to go to our website. You can find all the information for giving there by going to miraclecitychurch.org slash give. And we know the Lord will bless you for your generosity. Thanks so much for being part of what God is doing here. And we pray many blessings on your life.